Thank you for the click. Prepare yourself for a little bit of optimism as well as quite a bit of shade. My name is Luxley, and on the day before tomorrow, we're gonna grapple and tackle Shadowlands, Covenant abilities, why some people are f***ing pissed off, and others are like, eh, no big deal. Shadowlands is a bit sparse on new features, especially when compared side by side with beloved X packs like Wrath of the Lich King and Burning Crusade. Even a polarized X pack like BFA offered more new features than what Shadowlands currently does. Matter of fact, two times more. In terms of quantity, mind you, not quality, BFA did infuse the game with quite a few new features. Allied races, war fronts, Isle Expeditions, Azerong Armor, War Mode, and of course, I'm kind of pushing the stats here, but we're going to include Epic Random Battlegrounds as well. Quantity, you just got to nod your head yes. Quality, well, <laughs> not exactly. L let's be real here. Raise your hand if you know more than one idiot who skipped classes or called in sick for work the next day because they insisted on spamming Isle Expeditions or War Fronts to their heart's delight all night long. Yeah, just what I thought not happening. BFA delivered six new features, which is pretty, pretty strong. Matter of fact, if you look back at all the other X-Packs, that's about what in line Blizzard has done as far as new X-Packs with each new feature. Of course, I'm taking out new raids, new dungeons, because they do that every single X-Pack, so not really a new feature. And Shadowlands at the moment will deliver three new features. Covenants, Torghast, the Tower of the Damned, and of course, Soulbinds. Out of the gate, Shadowlands is under a lot of pressure, enormous pressure to deliver quality. And Shadowlands offers half the number of new features as BFA or any other WoW X pack, including WAD. Blizzard's margin for error here is extraordinarily thin. They're packing less ammo with new features to hit the mark, as well as seduce new and returning players. And they're coming off what is arguably the worst X-Pack in WoW's 15-year history. Yes, I am contending at launch BFA was worse than WAD. Let me repeat that. At launch, BFA was worse than WAD. And as far as new features go, WAD actually, this is true, <laughs> I'm going to show you the graphics here, WAD offered more new features than Shadowlands currently does. Now we're talking quantity here, we're not talking quality. At this point in the Shadowlands Alpha, whether or not Blizzard can or even will deliver true quality, it's going to largely depend on your faith and confidence in Ian has a clueless, that should give you a little bit of a clue where I'm at, and the rest of the dev team. I completely understand and accept the fact everyone's level of confidence is different. For me, after Warlords of Drain All the Fun, Legion's failed attempt at PvP Renaissance, and the overall debacle that was BFA, my confidence level pins the needle to the far left. In other words, E for Empty, much closer to Zilch, not a zero, than a half full gas tank of optimism. Then again, I could be wrong. I could be dead wrong. Truth be told, there are remnants stitched into WoW I still enjoy and love. Otherwise, I don't bother to criticize or challenge Blizzard to excellence. And basically, I just stop producing and uploading WoW videos. I even probably stop playing the game altogether. Not a break like some people go on. Not a protest for a month or two because something that happened in China six months ago. I uninstall WoW once and for always, game over. If Blizzard hits the mark on two of the three new features and the class on pruning project works as intended, Shadowlands is going to deliver more quality, quality content than BFA and WAD combined. I am unapologetically cautiously optimistic here, but we're talking two porcupines getting down and having sex kind of caution. For me, the big question mark in the room lies solely with covenants. 
specifically the covenant class abilities. I'll explain why in a minute or two, but first, I think it's very important we talk about what covenants are, and more importantly, what they are intended to be and represent in the game. Covenants remind me of a cliff note version of Suramar. Lots of story, NPC heroes, exploration, kind of lick your finger, turn the page exploration, lore, world building, and rewards. Plenty of rewards, including Xbox, accessories, mounts, and, and a lot more. Plus, there are four covenants to experience in Shadowlands as opposed to one in Legion, also known as Soramar, and zero in BFA. If you love the aforementioned parts of WoW, in other words, the RPG elements in any given MMO, then you'll love covenants regardless of the underlying flaws I'm about to expose. Better yet, covenants will define your character's gameplay with a signature ability, which is more or less a racial and a special empowered class ability. The issue lies with the class ability, and other wild pundits like Belluar, Asmund Gold, Preacher, and Van Ruki 100% agree. And what makes this a bigger problem than most people realize, the Soulbinds are not gonna be limited to Torghast. That's what I initially thought, they would just be limited to Torghast, but that is not the case. In a recent interview with a French streamer, Zoltan, Ian has a clueless said, and I quote, Soulbinds will be used everywhere in the game, not just Torghast. And here's why Covenant class abilities, not the abilities themselves for each particular class, but more so how they're introduced into the game and their overall inflexibility to be changed on the fly are gonna be a pretty big, big, big issue for some players. If you choose the wrong covenant, or more importantly, your covenant class ability, or even soulbind, is nerfed in a future balancing patch, what are you gonna do? Or even worse, let's say if XYZ or ABC, two variable abilities directly affected by your covenant class ability or soulbind, let's say one of them is nerfed, like Shadow Bolt for Warlocks, or a different one is fattened up and buffed, then what do you do? Let's play Jeopardy for a quick second or two. I'm not a big fan of Jeopardy, but let me throw you out the answer. Never. The question is, when is the last time Blizzard did not turn a knobs and or buff or nerf classes after the launch of a new X-Pack? Never. Never happened. Blizzard just loves turning the knobs, especially in the beginning of an X-Pack. Alex, I'll take what happens if I decide to switch covenants during patch 9.1 or maybe even 9.3 for 500. Now, depending on how far you've progressed into your covenant, best case scenario here, best case scenario, you could be looking at a measly half hour or so to make that switch, which really isn't that bad. The big problem is if you decide that eh, I don't like this new ability, I wanna go back to where I was, and now you're looking at a significant problem. And then again, for all we know, worst case scenario, switching covenants could be a four to six hour commitment. We, we just don't know for certain. And quite honestly, we only know what Blizzard tells us, and I believe half of what Blizzard says when I'm drunk, because that's what they've demonstrated to me over the years. That's the kind of track record they have. Now here's where things get really murky. If you're a player who splits your game, say, let's say you split your game time, the end game, 50-50 between Mythic Raiding and Arena, one Covenant may be better for PvE and another one for PvP. In other words, gotta go with the fairy people for PvE and I gotta go with the Venthyr for PvP. And if you're someone who enjoys playing two different roles with the same class, for example, everything that is not a hunter, rogue, mage, or warlock, in other words, 66% of the classes in the game, what if the best covenant ability for a tank isn't the best one for a DPS or a healer? Then, then what do you do? Furthermore, Blizzard insists they'll balance the covenant class abilities with each other, make a very compelling and meaningful choice for players. Maybe so, I honestly hope so. But then again, ask yourself this question. When is the last time Blizzard balanced anything, let alone balanced a single class ability intended for a DPS, a healer, and a tank? Even essences 
introduced in patch 8.2, offered separate abilities based on role. Why? Because they probably didn't want to balance them, or they knew they couldn't balance them. Now, Blizzard may uh, be up to the challenge, which is great. They think, yeah, we could do this. We got this. Ask yourself this question. Do you really see a path for success balancing one particular ability for a tank, a healer, and a DPS? I honestly don't. Appreciate the effort, like the idea, you want to try it, but no. Locking yourself into one Covenant ability can and more likely will gimp one aspect of your gameplay as well as gimp your group or guild's progress in PvE or PvP. Let's face facts here. How many times you get into a pug, particularly pugs, okay? Even guilds sometimes. If you're kind of on the fringes, you're trying to earn your spot, you're trying to prove yourself, and what do they do? They inspect you and they start saying, oh, no, you got to be a fire mage and you got to do this or you got to be a assassination rogue and you got to do this. We know that that's part of the game. Maybe they're right. Maybe they're wrong. Maybe you can prove them wrong, but it doesn't matter. You want to be able to get into that pug. You want to be able to get off the bench and get into that raid. This is a very similar issue to what occurred at the start of Legion with Artifact Power. For example, if you chose to play a Frost Mage, at the start of Legion. And then for whatever reason, you switch to a Fire Mage. Uh, the switch meant uh, you wipe the slate clean, start at zero, and commit a hell of a lot of time and effort just to get where you were a week ago. Meanwhile, other players who didn't make the switch suddenly have a leg up on you. And something very similar occurred at the start of BFA as well with Azeron gear. Not only did Azeron gear lack flexibility, when switching specializations, but the impact of the gear happened to be very, very underwhelming for some classes. In both Legion and BFA, beta players exposed the respective problems with artifact power and Azeron gear. For those of you who are a little confused, Azeron is my version of Azerite gear. In turn, Blizzard did nothing until after launch to fix these issues. Legion's PvE content happened to be pretty damn good, so players simply roll with the punches. They took the bad with the good, or the good with the bad, however you want to phrase it, and they said, you know, yeah, it's got some things that don't work here, but overall, we really love it. But BFA didn't have that same luxury or that same attitude. Players didn't have that same luxury or attitude. The content was uninspired, to say the least, and players pretty much unsubbed. Now, the big question is this. Why isn't Blizzard making the necessary changes to Covenants? Basically how that Covenant class ability is unlocked in the game and used in the game. Especially when, while Pundits, and I said this before, like Preacher, Asmongol, Venruki, and Belluar all concur. This is going to be a major issue for players going forward. And here's a dose of truth. The combined followers of the aforementioned WoW influencers Basically, their followers exceed probably even more than 3 million players. And their overall playing experience with WoW probably exceeds well over 50 years. Now, I can understand Blizzard's inaction or status quo approach if all the aforementioned players didn't concur. In other words, a split decision. But they most certainly do agree. They most certainly do concur. And what is Blizzard's official response to all this criticism? We hear you and see the potential issue, but we want to try it first. I mean, let's let's be real here. No one can argue whether or not Preacher, Vinruki, Asmongol, Beluar are reliable sources with regard to providing Blizzard feedback on the Alpha. They've evaluated and critiqued new features in the game for years. More importantly, and this is a key point, they interact with the fan base on Twitch, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube on a daily basis more so than anyone employed at Blizzard. While they may not respond to the overwhelming majority of comments from WoW fans, speaking from a content creator's perspective, I guarantee you they're reading the comments. And it's like a snapshot of what the players want and where the player's temperature is on particular topics and particular ideas and what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. Any good content creator is going to read those comments from time to time and really get that overall feel of where the community is. It's very simple. They want to know what the fans, what WoW fans want. 
The fact is, giving people what they want is a key ingredient for any given content creator, including, get this blizzard, game makers. And how do you do that? You consistently engage your audience with questions, then listen or read their responses, then ask another question, starting with how or why, and repeat, rinse and repeat. And get a good feel for where the where your fans are. Now, after 15 years, this is a lesson Blizzard honestly still hasn't learned, unfortunately. They made the same mistake in Legion with artifact power, then again in BFA with Azeron gear. In fairness, Blizzard's thought process here is more than likely will pull the trigger, make a change after launch in a future patch. It's possible the class covenant abilities are just way too intertwined with other aspects and systems in the game. They just don't want to touch it right now. It's too laborious a task. And other priorities take precedence in the alpha right now because they're on a deadline. They want to make sure they get Shadowlands out there. Now, here are a few other possible reasons why Blizzard isn't putting feedback from prominent WoW influencers into action. One, ego. They're sitting there and they're thinking, hey, we've got 15 years experience in the game development industry. We know better than you. We know better than EA. We know better than this company, that company. The absolute best exhibition of this attitude came from Jay Allen Black during BlizzCon, which I do believe was 2013, where he said, I think you want it, but no, you really don't. How did that work out? Number two, the old fun versus time sink dilemma. Now, a lack of worthy rewards or meaningful choice equals players will not do the content. This is a lesson Blizzard learned. This is a lesson I learned. It's pr very much true. Oddly enough, this is proof Blizzard does not possess a learning disability because they've learned this lesson very well. The bottom line here, Blizzard needs players to be on the treadmill and designs the game more or less based on that. When they start focusing too much on that time sink business model and start gating content and they start throwing hoops at players and they start throwing hurdles at players, players get pissed, they get turned off, they unsub. There needs to be a good balance between time sink and fun. Number three, legendaries or conduits may change the playing field and neither of them have been introduced in the alpha at the time of this video's production. In other words, we're not getting the full picture. We're not getting the big picture as of yet. And Blizzard could very well be holding off on changes until we do. In other words, when we have all the cards, maybe our opinion will change. I would be willing to place a fat bet that it doesn't, but maybe it does. Number four, a future patch will address the potential issue. Now this could work out well, like it did in Legion, where players kind of said, all right, thank you, Blizzard. We, You kind of helped us out a little bit. You could have gave us more, but the rest of this stuff is pretty good, so we'll stick around. Or it could be a complete disaster like it was in BFA, where players said, you know, this sucks, I'm out. Either way, the way I see it, why even bother taking this kind of risk when there's so many other options as to what you could do with class abilities from Covenants, Number five, the old dilemma of the engineer versus the mechanic. The former being uh, the Blizz devs, so the Blizz devs are the engineers and the latter are the players. They are the mechanics. Keep that in mind. Now, sometimes an engineer's intent isn't always near or even close to what the end product actually turns out to be. Here's an example of that. Alexander Graham Bell intended to invent a hearing aid but instead invented the telephone. The point is, the players see a better application for class covenant abilities, and Blizzard kind of says they see it, but they don't quite agree. They're sticking with their original design intent. I honestly do not know why Blizzard isn't putting wheels in motion and changing the way they introduce class covenant abilities into the game and why they don't give them more flexibility. I offered six possible reasons why. Maybe I hit the mark on one of them. And maybe I didn't. Maybe I completely missed. But it's also possible that it's a combination of all six. And if the latter is the case, I can understand and respect that. But here's, here's what really bothers me about all this. Three things. Three things bother me. One, 
why even bother uh, with an alpha or beta process if you're if you're not going to not only listen but take action? I don't get it. I mean, here's an analogy. It's like me hiring a dietitian. I want to lose weight. She lays out a diet, a strict daily diet for me. And on day two, I call her up and ask, can I have a McDonald's number two for dinner? She obviously tells me no, a big fat no. And then I tell her, I hear what you're saying and I see the potential destruction of my diet, but I want to try it first. Number two, all the wow influences I mentioned earlier insist Blizzard is listening this time. This time Blizzard's listening and they're being transparent. Now, part of that statement is dead on true, 100% true. They are being very, very transparent. They are making themselves readily available for the players in the alpha, more so than ever before. That's fact. On the other hand, whether or not they're really listening and willing to make an important change remains to be seen. There is a profound difference between listening to feedback and putting change into action. Blizzard has not done the latter as of yet or at least not done so with a mechanism that is pertinent to the game and pretty much affects the entire game. They've vigorously, yet respectfully, defended their position on not making a change with the class covenant abilities on multiple occasions. On some level, it makes me wonder, just makes me wonder what else Blizzard isn't really listening to because sometimes WoW influencers, like hardcore WoW fans, can have blinders on, and they see what they want to see, and not what is. Number three, RPGs versus MMO. The bottom line here, I know WoW really, really wants to be an RPG, but let's face it, it's an MMO. Blizzard conveniently sometimes forgets character choice related to power not only affect you, but also affect the group or team you're a part of. Why risk turning players off to the new X-Pack? You may insist, wow, it's fun, and you're in it for the long haul no matter what. In other words, you find out there's a new wow X-Pack, snap your fingers, it's mine. Here, here's the problem with this. When you just see something and you just know you love it before you even try it, like, I gotta have it. It's a great thing, passion. I love passion. Everybody loves passion. And you very well might think, Blizzard just can't put out something that isn't overall fun. You don't care what others think or do. You just love the game. I understand and respect that, but here's a dose of truth you, you may or may not realize. If players place more emphasis on what they dislike and less on what they like in game, they, they, they're going to unsub. And if enough players unsub, queue times go up. Guilds break up because someone might not just permanently quit WoW, but just say, you know, I got better things to do. I'm out. I'm out. I'm taking a break, guys. I'll be out. I'm out. Or you get, how many times have you seen a YouTuber get all pissed off about, well, I'm quitting, man. I'm done with this game. I'm never. And then they get into the alpha and they do videos on WoW. I mean, let's face it. It happens. And those kind of things do break up guilds. You lose key players. It's hard to find a tank. Hard to find a healer, especially if you lose one of those. And then less and less players engage in competitive content. And most important of all, Blizzard loses interest in the current X-Pack. A lot of people unsub and they set their focus on the next one, which means less balancing patches, less content in future patches. I mean, the best example of this, of Blizzard losing interest is patch 6.1 when they introduced, get this, this is a really great ability, great, great new feature. Twitter integration as a major new feature. And now keep in mind that patch came on the heels of roughly three to four million players on subbing from WAD in a six month period, or no, I'm sorry, in a six week period following launch. And around that same time is when Blizzard decided, you know, subs don't really mean much anymore. So we're, we're just going to stop showing those numbers because they're really not good. No, I mean, they're, they're not bad, but we, we just don't think they're important, so we're not going to show them anymore. Now, I hope people just don't get the wrong idea. I want Shadowlands to be awesome. The fact I've uploaded over 800 WoW videos on my... Actually, it's over 1,000. I probably deleted 200 videos. My YouTube channel is a pretty strong testament to the fact that I do want WoW to do very well. My criticism here 
is 100% intended to challenge Blizzard to improve the game, especially when they're at the crossroads here and they can do it very, very quickly, can make that switch. And I want them, I want Blizzard, I want Shadowlands to reach as many new and returning players as reasonably possible. Because here, here's the bottom line. I love my channel and what I create, the videos I create a lot more than I do WoW. And a rising tide lifts all boats. And if WoW does well, in turn, my YouTube channel will do well, regardless of how bad my content may or may not be. Now, criticism coming from the inside does hold a lot of currency. More currency than criticism coming from the outside. In other words, here, here's the point I'm trying to make. If you're subbed and engaged with the game, or subbed to WoW and engaged with WoW, you're invested and hopeful and just not ranting without any kind of reason or purpose. And if you offer a potential solution for discussion, you're taking your criticism to a higher level. Now, normally I just bitch and complain and I hardly even bother to offer a good or mediocre solution up for discussion. It's not because I don't have one or two in mind. I, I simply don't want to put myself in the habit of helping a multi-billion dollar company solve their problems for free. I'm not saying I have all the right answers. I, I certainly don't. But I am confident that I ask the right questions. And through discussion and input with other players out there, which is why if you feel that this video offers a lot of insight and creates a very, very good argument why these class covenant abilities should be changed, or at least how they're introduced be changed, uh, please share the video. And also, add your thoughts in the comments section. Together, we might find a, a better solution, and that's my intent here. So I invite you to stay tuned and be subscribed because in the next video, it might be next week, it might be in a couple of days, but in a video, <laughs> coming soon. I'm gonna present a few potential fixes for class covenant abilities. Gave it a lot of thought, I have quite a few different ideas that Blizzard could implement. I guarantee they're, they're not gonna be perfect, uh, but they will be up for discussion and improvement. In other words, let's turn it into a Christmas tree. All you guys put your decorations on it and maybe come up with something great. That's how great ideas are born. Sometimes someone takes a mediocre idea, they put everyone on the right path and players step in, fans step in, and they offer their ideas as well. Let's face it, that's 100% better than just bitching and complaining. I want to thank everybody for listening. My name is Luxley. Once again, yes, my name is Luxley. And I am going to leave you with this final thought. Whatever it is by you, whether it's morning, afternoon, or night, make it epic.